Welcome to the Science Asylum. I am Nick Lucid. A few months ago, I posted a video on entropy, and I got a lot of comments asking for more. Okay, that's a lot of comments. The explanations in that video work fine, as long as all you're trying to do is regurgitate some words onto some test. But if you think about them at all, they might leave you wondering. Aren't order and disorder kind of subjective and personal? How is it possible that the universe loses information over time if it never really had the information to begin with? Why does entropy even matter? Whoa, whoa, hold your horses. That last question is a little more difficult to answer, so let's address the others first. Entropy isn't really about order and disorder in the way you usually use these words. I'm sure the internet has some definitions. Okay, that's some serious ambiguity. English really sucks sometimes, so let's just avoid these words altogether. We run into similar problems when we try to use the word information, <clears throat> so let's just avoid that one too. Ugh. Ow. Hmm, what does that leave us with? Statistics. I hate statistics as much as the next person, but I think we can manage this. Let's get our heads in the right place using pennies, since demonstrations are all they're really good for anyway. I have a bunch of pennies here from the teddy bank. All from the same year and all equally as dirty. Each penny has two possible states it can be in, heads or tails. Right now, the single penny reads tails. But if I do this, it could be in either. Can't we just check and see what it is? Yes, yes, but that's not the point. The point is on any given shake, it only has a 50% chance of recovering that original state. Okay, that's kind of boring. Let's make it more interesting. Dun, dun, dun. This set of pennies is in the state Tails Tails. Give it a shake though. And it now has two times two or four possible states. Since we can't tell the pennies apart, Tails Heads and Heads Tails are indistinguishable. It is twice as likely to be in one of those states than it is the original Tails Tails. Bigger. Three pennies has two times two times two, or eight possible states. The mixed states are becoming progressively more likely. Bigger! Four pennies has two times two times two times two, or 16 possible states. Bigger! Oh yeah? <gasps> dun, dun, dun. 50 pennies has two times two times two times two to the 50th power or a little over one times 10 to the 15 possible states. That's over a thousand million million. Well, that escalated quickly. Most of those states are relatively even mixtures of heads or tails, because those are far more common. And that's only 50 objects, each having two possible states. A real collection of particles would likely have millions of millions of millions of millions of particles, each with a very large number of possible states. Don't even try to picture that, because no one can. It just got real. The entropy of any collection of particles depends solely on how many energy states are accessible. In other words, how many ways that energy can be tucked into all the spots. So why does it matter? Because it always goes up. The second law of thermodynamics says, the entropy of any closed system tends toward a maximum. The only truly closed system is the universe, but we can get pretty close in the right lab environment. So how do we really know it always goes up? That's actually a question I asked myself recently. So I did a little research and I discovered something mind-blowing. We don't actually know for sure. In fact, there's nothing in any other physical law to even suggest it. The second law is simply necessary to explain all the observations we make. Assuming it's true though, it does tell us a few things. Heat must always flow from warmer to colder areas, never from colder to warmer. 100% energy efficiency is impossible. There is always a loss to the environment. Seriously though, what's that mean? Oh yeah, I guess relevance would be a good idea. Without the second law of thermodynamics, we could never completely explain superheating or supercooling. We'd never know how well we could build an engine, an oven, or a refrigerator. And we'd have no way of predicting the ultimate fate of the Earth, the Sun, or the entire universe. It lets us know our limitations, which is something we should always be aware of. So what have you done to increase the entropy of the universe lately? I'm gearing up to run my air conditioner non-stop for three months, because America. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy. Oh, 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 I almost forgot. Some of you may have already noticed, but I started a vlog channel. So click anywhere right here to go check it out.